Okay, so first things first, I would like to make a note of the fact that not only are each of the particles labeled with numbers, but the problem itself also gives us the signs of each of their charges, meaning whether or not they're positive or negative. Now this information often proves to be very useful for these sorts of problems. So the first thing I'm going to do is label each particle as positive or negative based on what the problem has told us. The second thing I want to make a note of is the conventions for how electric fields are treated as vectors. Now specifically, when we have a positive charge, then the electric field points away from the charge. And if we have a negative ch negatively charged particle, then the electric field points towards the particle. This is also very useful to keep in mind, especially for a problem like this, since the problem is asking for the net electric field at a certain point due to other charges. So it's very important to keep in mind the direction that the electric field is coming out of or into each particle. In fact, just to get us started, let's draw little vector arrows near this point that we're trying to analyze uh, to show how that point is being affected by the electric field due to each particle. First off, Q1 is positively charged, so at point P there, there should be a, a vector arrow representing that the electric field contribution from particle 1 is going to be pointed away from Q1, uh, kind of like this. Q2 is also positively charged, so there should be an arrow pointing away from Q2 at uh, point P. Q3 is positively charged, so once again there should, be an, there should be a vector arrow, an electric field, at point P that is representing a charge coming away from, uh, from Q3. And lastly, Q4 is negatively charged, so this time we'll have an arrow pointed towards Q4 at the spot where point P is. We have now discussed the qualities of this system, but in order to answer the problem, we need to actually find out what the magnitude is of the electric field there. So we'll need to do some quantitative analysis here as well. Now, according to the formula for the electric field at some point due to a charged particle, the magnitude of the electric field due to a single particle is going to be equal to k times the magnitude of the charge divided by the square of the distance between of, of r squared, the, which is the distance between the particle that is setting up the charge and the point we're looking at. And you might notice, just from this formula alone, along with our diagram, that already there are two charges we can disregard entirely. Remember, the electric field is a vector, and vectors, when they oppose each other and are of equal magnitude, can cancel each other out for a, for a, a completely absent effect. So if you notice that the electric field is based on the magnitude of the charge and is based on the distance, then you might notice that Q1 and Q2 are going to cancel each other out because their fields are pointing in the opposite directions at point P, and both of them are the same distance apart from point P. Additionally, the problem tells us that they both have the same charge. This means that the electric field set up by Q1 is the same magnitude as the electric field set up by Q2 at this point. And since they both have the same charge, the directions of the field that they're creating at that point are opposite and will completely vanish, meaning that we can simplify this diagram a bit. So here I've just completely erased Q1 and Q2 from the diagram. And this is nice because now we've got the point along with all the charges remaining now they're all lined up in kind of a straight line fashion, which is really nice because it means that we can look at this entire problem as like a singular axis, which is useful because it means that, because if, if we had a more complicated arrangement like we did a minute ago, then there would be a chance that we might have to worry about angles and trigonometry, but, in the, but since those charges can just be ignored, we don't need to worry about all of that. Instead, let's look at the remaining setup as a singular axis, and I'll just arbitrarily decide that towards the upper right is going to be the positive x direction. If you're looking at this on a sheet of paper, then it might help to rotate the paper so that the axis is horizontal, and then it might look even more intuitive in that case. The net electric field at point P, then, as we can see, 
is just going to be equal to the electric field due to point 0.4 minus the electric field due to Q3. The reason why I've made E4 positive and E3 negative is because if we go by our axis here, or the one that I've set up, then uh, because Q4 is negative, the arrow pointing, the arrow of the electric field that is being created by that is in the same direction as the positive axis, whereas Q3, the arrow is pointed away from it, causing it to point negative along our axis. So therefore, E4 is positive and E3 is negative. Now in order to get our answer, let's substitute in the formula for the electric field due to a point charge in for each of our E's. Alright, not too tricky, though I do want to make note of the fact that for E sub 4, that R value should be 2D instead of just D, because the charge particle 4 is 2Ds away from point P. Now might be a time when you might want to pull out a calculator and plug in all of your numbers to get the final answer. However, uh, at least in my case with the numbers I have, and maybe this is the case for you as well, there is uh, something more interesting that we can do to get the answer with this result that doesn't actually require the use of a calculator. If I were to just substitute out the Q's for the charges given to us, and if I were to distribute this square in the denominator of the E4 term, then we find a kind of interesting result, actually. So that's what I've done here. I put in 12E for Q4, and I put in 3E for Q3. And the reason why I didn't include the negative sign for Q4 is because, again, we're only looking at the magnitudes here, so the signs can be disregarded. I've also replaced the 2D squared with 4 times D squared, since the, the, two can just be re the 2 squared can just be rewritten as 4. Now the reason why this result is interesting is because if you were to uh, simplify the constants, so 12 divided by 4 is 3, so if we were to rewrite the term that way, then the term that we end up with is exactly the same as the term on the right, meaning ultimately we just have something that is being subtracted by itself. So you don't even need to put this into a calculator to recognize that the answer is zero. There is no net electric field at the point P. I hope this video helped you. If uh, you have any questions, you're more than welcome to post a comment down below. If you like this video and you want to see more from it, then um, I take requests. You may join my Discord server or, or message me on Discord to talk about them, or subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see when I upload more of these in the future. Thank you. Have a nice day.